Hey everyone, Ariel Adams here with the blog to watch. Please subscribe to our videos on YouTube and like this video if you find it useful. This is a review of the Ball Engineer Master 2 Diver World Time, or as I like to call it, the Ball Engineer Master 2 Diver World Time 2. Why is it the two twice? Well, this is sort of a reissue um, of the original uh, Diver World Time and Ball has tweaked the dial a little bit, but otherwise it's more or less the same watch. And this is, this is what I'll call a cult hit because this is actually a very cool watch, but it doesn't sound like a cool watch. If you say, take a dive watch, okay, at a world time, and you're like, what? But yeah, that's essentially what this is. It's a 300 meter water resistant dive watch in a 45 millimeter wide, um, pretty durable steel case. And what Bala has done is taken the sort of classic world time dial, which has a, a, a ring, uh, a disc that moves with the regular time that allows you to know the time in, in any of the major 24 time zones. And so the way you do that is you have to have up here your local time, which I happen to be Los Angeles, and then you, you count, right? So you would, you would look over here to Mexico. So if it's, if it's you know, between, uh, I guess it would be two, about 2.30 in Los Angeles, you just go over a few time, a few, uh, time zones and then in Mexico City, it would be, um, what is that, about 4.30, so I guess two hours later, right? So that's, that's how it would work, and these would be the reference cities. But at the same time, that ring also happens to be a rotating bezel. So if you wanted to, you set this up um, like a rotating bezel, <clears throat> like a timing bezel. It's actually bi-directional, which obviously makes sense, um, not for a diving watch. Um, but you set it up there and then now you have an individual uh, timing bezel that, that you can use. So you can't really use it as a world timer and a dive watch. You have to choose. If you are underwater, or I guess about to be underwater and you want to time something, you're not going to know what time zone it is in other places. I'm sorry, it's just a trade-off you have to make. But I'm pretty sure that you're only going to be using one of those functions at any given time. Um, so it's interesting to see how Ball has, has done that. This, this inner rotating um, bezel here has tritium gas tubes in it, just like the dial, it ha of course, because it's a ball, which means that it, it sort of naturally glows at night. Um, the movement, which is the base ETA with some modification, um, has, it's, I think it's a 2836 base, and you can see the day-date complication as well, and, and they separate those, which is, which is interesting. On the wrist, this is, um, it's a comfortable watch, it's beefier. I actually like it a lot. I find the world time feature combined with a, with a sports watch or dive watch in this, in this situation oddly makes sense. You wouldn't think it does, but it's oddly useful um, because having a world timer always makes sense. And what it does is it allows you to sort of expand the functionality of a dive watch without really getting, um, you know, really obstructing the legibility, right? Because the dial for the time is still very legible and easy to see, and everything about the world time is on this periphery. So it, it just, it kind of oddly works. Because it's a ball, the, the case is also very um, shock resistant and anti-magnetic. Um, and so obviously you have those, those benefits. One of the things I want to point out on the back here, ball likes to do this sometimes. There's an engraving of, I think it's like a guy standing on the top of a mountain, but Ball needs to get an award for having some of the strangest case back engravings I see anywhere. Um, it's just, it's not the first one I've seen. It's just kind of humorous. It's not really a bad thing. It's just kind of funny. You see it, you're like, what's, what's going on there? Um, and then you have to look really close. You're like, oh, that's a guy kind of standing on top of a rock that says Ball being very happy, which, you know, has not that much to do with dive watches, in my opinion, or traveling around the world, but I'll leave that to the artistic people at Ball to explain at some point. Anyways, sorry, I'm in one of those moods today. So again, this is the Ball Engineer Master 2 Diver World Time 2, because this is the reissue. And the original one came out, I want to say about 2010, so it's a while ago. I do agree that the slightly refined dial on this one does look a little bit better. And one of the things they did is they made it a little bit more sporty um, for this refined dial. The, the other one, the previous model, wasn't not sporty, but it just had 
a couple of elements to it, like a little picture of a moon, I think, um, on the world time disc that just sort of was a little bit more formal and dressy than you would expect in, in something like this. So overall, um, an interesting combination of complications that does seem to work in a handsome and very wearable sports watch. So it's a cool diver with an added element of functionality. Some people want their divers just to tell the time. Other people like it to have a few more little bits and pieces and complications. And for those people, this is a great option. It's actually not that much money. I don't have the exact US price on me right now, um, but it's about 3,000 bucks, which is pretty reasonable. And you can see the full review of the Ball Engineer Master 2 Diver World Time on a block to watch. Thanks.